All right, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Glennard, I feel like talking to somebody all the way in Poland. Wouldn't I that do be too. Cool? I think we'll just uh, reach out and touch somebody in Poland. Hey, today. look who's on the line. Who is that? <laughs> that is Alina. Alina, how do you pronounce your last name? I don't want to butcher it because I am not very good with foreign languages. <laughs> not that difficult. It's Lewandowska. <laughs> Lewandowska. That's really cool. I got it. That's that really, is that is good. a cool, that yes. is a cool last name. And the reason why we have Alina on the line uh, with us and in the studio via the magic of the internet is she's got two projects, two music projects that are going on. Now, here we are trying to do this, okay? <laughs> it's like pig on roller skates, like you say. You know, we're running around. We're really plugging headphones. Yeah, you know? exactly, <laughs> and doing, doing lots of tests. But she has two music projects. One of them is in Nominee Day. Did I pronounce that right, Alina? Almost right. Yes. Almost. <laughs> Nominee Day. So, okay, okay. <laughs> that was gracious. <laughs> That's a universal language so, right there. So, so how, do, how do I pronounce that without sounding like a Southerner in the United States? From Latin, so you shall pronounce it in nomina day. <laughs> you do that so well. That you just put me to shame. I'm gonna just go sit over here now in the corner of the studio. Oh, and, and okay. Now the second project you have, I think I can get this one right. If I if I can't get this one right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go. Uh, well, I am home, but <laughs> and that's the name of the project at home. Did I pronounce that one right? That was cool. All right. Hey, I was cool, dude. So you have two projects going on at the same time. Why have you chosen to do two different music projects? First of all, I have never thought that I would ever have two bands. Yes, let's put it right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've been singing with uh, in Nomina Day for almost 10 years. And honestly, uh, I am very happy with guys. Yes, uh, the cooperation is very smooth. I love them. We have released three uh, CDs already. But of course, Holy Spirit has his own sway. And he suddenly opened a new door for us. Yes. And, okay. Uh, uh, for me, <laughs> because uh, during the promotion of uh, In Nomina Day in the internet on one of the Christian forums, uh, when I was putting uh, one of our videos, I have met Dave Hansen. Uh, he is a guitarist from In The Verse, from American band. And we started to chat. It was very funny. And he sent me some of his music. And when I heard his heavy riffs, it was so incredible. And they were so melodic that I thought, oh my, I would like to sing something to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just almost immediately taken my recorder on my phone, yes, and I have uh, sing some, some vocal tracks, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I, I have sent them to Dave. And Dave, after listening, uh, was like, like, whoa, let's create the band. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. <laughs> and an almost immediate reaction, let's say. And uh, during one weekend, uh, I have uh, written four songs and uh, also lyrics. So it was very fast. Uh, it was amazing uh, experience for me because I, I never um, had such experiences yes, that everything is going so smooth and so fast. And, you know, within four days, you have ready four songs. So I have found also um, the producer in Poland uh, who helped me to record. And now we can enjoy our project at home uh, with the album, If You Proclaim, already in the Internet because we have released it uh, in uh, October. I am very happy that you released that song. <laughs> If you proclaim because I love that song and it's one of those songs that when I'm in the shower just goes through my head okay <laughs> yeah, yeah no, okay no. <laughs> no, that's cool yeah but you know what I'm no, talking about I yeah. totally get it it's like ones that you can't get rid of you sit there and it just moves you and, and you, you you dial in and it's it. it's very powerful because one of the lyrics that you put in there Alina is that if you proclaim the devil has no access and I've mm -hmm. with, with everything that goes on, as you know, when you're involved in doing the work of the Lord, there's all sorts of adversaries and enemies at the door. And it, it's a spiritual battle. And you really have to do that. And I've had to rely upon the words of that song over the past couple of weeks. And Dan, you know that, yeah. that I've had to do that. It's really helped me out. What's the story behind that song? How did that one come about, if you proclaim? And we're going to play that for our listeners in just a few minutes. So that song is based basically on God's word and um, the chapter 10 of Romans. Uh, because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe uh, that 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is the base of that song. Uh, and it is also my personal experience, to be honest, because some years ago I had a very, very rough moments in my life. And I remember very well that on that day, I just, you know, fell down on my knees. I started to cry and started to pray. And I just simply said, God, I cannot stand my life the way it is right now. Please change it. Please do something. I cannot live like that. And that was something really amazing because after two weeks, I got a new job. I have moved to another city. I have met IND, <laughs> so in nomine Dei. <laughs> uh, I have found a place in church where I have till this moment a lot of good friends. When you proclaim, if you proclaim Jesus your Lord, your life can change and uh, Jesus can make miracles in your life. Uh, of course, uh, these hard days, these difficult days won't disappear suddenly, yes? Uh, they will uh, stay with you because it's a part of life, yes? We, we are not always happy. We sometimes have very bad moments in our life, but we can be sure that God is with us at that moment, that you are not alone, you are loved. Uh, and um, Jesus will do everything to protect you, yes, to help you. Uh, so, in fact, uh, devil can uh, maybe only roar. In fact, you belong to Jesus and devil has no access to you anymore, yes. Of course, you are still sinner and, of course, you can make bad, bad choices, but God is always trustful and he always loves you and he's always with you. So that was the main message of the uh, lyrics. I'm just going to sit here and chew on that for about 40 minutes and just just, just <laughs> soak that in. a long period of silence. <laughs> that just, just ministered to me as well. Yeah, uh, that, that was really good stuff. We're going to play If You Proclaim right now for our listeners, and we'll be right back. Rise 
question you seem to be extroverted have you always been um outgoing in personality like do you ever feel fear singing in front of crowds or or you've always since uh, you were a child you felt comfortable when i started it was always a little bit stressful when you have like 100 shows it is not mo- not uh, so stressful anymore okay okay <laughs> and i simply like people so i think that's why i like singing and i don't feel so much stressed it's only in the beginning but when i start singing everything is fine <laughs> to add on top of that this is her first international interview with us okay wow yeah, that's that's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah, doing good. <laughs> all, all Americans for everyone. Yeah, all Americans do not look like us. Thank, <laughs> thank goodness. That's why we do a podcast, and people can listen to us. They don't necessarily oh, yeah. they, don't. they don't necessarily have to uh, look at us. So we're gonna dive into some really deeper questions here. Now we're gonna we're gonna do the stage dive. Okay. Man. It's time to stage dive. <laughs> now, for me at my age, that's not usually a good idea to do, or I'm gonna need uh, back adjustments. Here we go. International stage diving with Dan, Glenn, and Alina. Yes. Here we are. <laughs> so we have listeners all over the world um, here with the Get Real podcast. We've got people that listen in the United States. We just got some listeners in Sweden this Vietnam, week. Finland. Vietnam, Finland, all over the world. But the majority of our listeners are here in the United States. And heavy metal, progressive metal, progressive rock is not something that you would hear when you turn on the radio here in the United States. Now, maybe late at night on some radio stations you can, but from Dan and I's understanding is that you would hear a little bit more heavy metal or progressive rock or progressive metal on the radio in Poland. It's a little bit more common and mainstream over there. Is is that the case? Not really, to be honest. I think it's everywhere like that. You know, that kind of music was popular maybe 20 years ago or 10 years ago, but now everything uh, is about rap and hip hop and such uh, such, uh, styles of music. But we still have a lot of people who like heavy music. So if you go to any metal concert in Poland or any uh, rock concert in Poland, you can find a lot of people, a lot of fans. Usually the club is full because people simply like that kind of music. Uh, but to be honest, we don't have too many radio stations or or labels or newspapers. Only some of, of them are uh, still uh, into metal. What what is very interesting for me, uh, still young people are interested in such kind of music. So I am very happy that still some heavy metal heads uh, are, you know, everywhere. How did you get into heavy metal? <laughs> <laughs> When I was young, it was very, very long time ago, <laughs> I, I started to listen to Michael Jackson, you know, okay. and he had bed and it was a little bit rocky. Yes? Mm-hmm. So from that moment, I, I really felt that I, I love uh, that kind of music. So <laughs> I've started uh, listening to heavy metal from Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson, <laughs> the father of heavy metal, the father of heavy metal. <laughs> there we have it, people. History. Let's hey, rewrite the history books, everybody. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, move over. Ozzy Osbourne, move over. It was MJ, the <laughs> king of pop. Shaboom! <laughs> so it was Beat It that you liked, correct? <laughs> was it the song Beat It? You know, yeah, a lot I like of- that riff. Of course. Yeah. And Smooth Criminal. Oh, Smooth Criminal. Okay. okay. And Alien Ant Farm did a great cover of that just a few years ago. Yeah. That's even heavier. But the thing about Beat It, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Eddie Van Halen was the one that played the guitar in Beat It. I didn't know that. Yes. Eddie Van Halen. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. You see, Alina can confirm it. I'm not just making this okay. stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> who are some of your other influences currently that are your influences in music? Mm. In the beginning, it was, of course, Alice in Chains, because I was always about grunge. I loved that. And Alice in Chains, you know, heavy riffs, Mm -hmm. combination of heavy riffs, of uh, melody, and these beautiful harmonies. It was something, wow, I was always under a big impression. I always uh, liked uh, Soundgarden, Mm -hmm. of course, Temple of of the Dog, uh, Pearl Jam. It was my favorite kind of music. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but presently I am totally in love with Mark Termonti. Uh, probably you heard about this guy. He was the guitarist in Crete. He has his own project, Alter Bridge, where Miles Kennedy is singing. Mm -hmm. But also solo guys really kicks butts and it is amazing to hear. I was always a big fan of riffs and melody, heavy riffs and melody, because it's not usual combination, yes? You can play very fast and there is no melody, no harmonies. And Mark Tremonti is doing very well. I have heard his last album, Dying Machine. I was on his concert and he's totally rough. <laughs> 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 and you sent me the information on that. I didn't find out about Mark uh, Tremonti until you sent me the information and I started listening. It's actually it's actually really good stuff. Yeah. Here's the bigger question of using metal and harder melodies to minister the truth of scripture to people. Now, here in the United States, there's for years, since what, the 80s, would you say, Dan? There's been this controversy in the United States about using... 70s, probably. Since the 70s, about heavy metal music in general, that, oh, it's the music of the devil. And then when it started being used as a tool of ministry, there's a lot of people that encourage people not to listen to it or to use it. So when we find bands and people that are using it as a tool, because all music belongs to God, and I really believe that metal itself really demonstrates a lot of God's awesome characteristics of passion, intensity, just all that, a lot of the things that drive people nuts about heavy metal. But do you have that controversy in Europe and in Poland of, well, you can't be a Christian and listen to heavy metal, or you can't be a Christian and play heavy metal. Is that is that an issue there, or is that just something that we have here maybe in the United States? I think it's everywhere, yes, because we are not living, you know, in space. Okay. <laughs> in the United States and, and, and Europe is very similar. When I was once uh, in the United States, I was feeling like at home, so <laughs> for me it's very similar. But of course, it depends on people's mentality, I think, and maturity. Uh, you can't uh, stop the Holy Spirit and if the fruit of uh, Christian music uh, are good, you cannot deny that, yes? No. And I know that a lot of people convert to God, God by uh, listening to that kind of music. So uh, Also, Jesus was meeting a lot of people who were uh, telling that he is throwing away demons uh, in the name of the devil, yes? And what we know was not true. Uh, so, in my opinion, music is a tool and you can make it godly or ungodly. Yes, if you are a musician. Yeah, so I, I would like to add also one thing, that Jesus came, you know, when he was on earth, he was touching the lepers, yes, and he was uh, healing sick people. And so if he wants to touch uh, metal, let's him do this, yes, and don't say it's not from God, because then you can be surprised one day that you fight with God. That's. I think that's really true, because it's kind of like shouting. Yeah. Metal is kind of like, you know, you might shout for joy. You might shout in anger. You might mm -hmm. shout. It's a very passionate release, you know? Yeah. And it, it just uh, makes sense that it would be controversial because yes. people get scared of their own passions. If you've got a really bad temper, you think you're going to punch a policeman in the face. Yeah, something. exactly. Hey, you're <laughs> but it's like you hold back or you stay gentle because... Your own self scares you. And I think that's why a lot of religious people, maybe they were, you know, felt like a real crazy person and they, they are attracted to something mild, but there can be really insidious things like hypocrisy that seem mild and right. seem quiet. And when you just really go out there, that's a tendency of either being absurd or really true right. when you shout. Right. And I think that kind of covers harder music and, and metal, but it does. I, I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. So. With IND, the majority of the songs that you write are in Polish, um, in your native language. And then with At Home, they're written in English. What is it that leads you to write in one language versus the other? And what language do you find it harder to write in or easier to write in? It's, again, the work of Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> Before I write any lyrics, I always pray. I always pray. I never wrote anything without praying, yes. So sometimes it's like that, that I just receive the whole sentences from Holy Spirit in Polish or in English. But of course, in a lot of cases, I, I can also write my, by my own and... Uh, 
just because Polish is my native language and we play most of the shows uh, in Poland, I usually use po Polish language. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, English is very melodic and it suits much better to many phrases when you sing. So I also um, started to, to write in English for some reasons, yeah. Because also because lately, especially, uh, I, I noticed that a lot of people from abroad are asking about IND, so uh, we would like uh, also them to understand the lyrics, so that's why I also write in English. I listened to um, both of the IND CDs that, that you sent me, and of course I'm sitting here with Google Translator most of the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for Google Translator, so I can I, I can understand. How did it work? It pretty worked good. pretty good. Oh, yes, yeah. I, and I will I will show off how well it worked in a little bit. Now I could have fooled everybody and be like, yes, I've become proficient in Polish <laughs> in the past past two weeks since I met Alina, but uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, but the thing that I noticed about your music is that it led me to think about something that my dad said to me when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, that music is a universal language and that it transcends. Even if you don't understand the language, you can understand the sentiment. And that's one of the things that was really easy for me to follow. Now, I listen to other music in other foreign languages as well. Uh, there, I don't think there's a lot of people that do that, but I appreciate music in other languages because I can understand what's going on and understand understand the sentiment. Sentiment. Music as a universal language. What are you? Th what are your thoughts on that, Alina? Uh, to be honest, I think that music needs to be experienced, to be touched. Yes, it's difficult to discuss, uh, you know, that matter because you need to feel it in your heart. Yes, that's true. And sometimes music works without words. Even yes, uh, we have a lot of progressive instrumental bands. Yes, yes. <laughs> so without vocals even. So. Uh, not uh, vocals are not so necessary, in fact, because music uh, gives you so great uh, uh, emotions, emotions that uh, that you don't even need sometimes words. And it's a great tool of communication for people. You can express your emotions. You can say to people what you feel inside. You can share with your experience uh, thanks to the music. And yeah, you are right. It's universal language. Have you all ever run into the situation where you'll hear someone? And perhaps they're speaking English. For example, earlier when you were sharing that scripture verse and sharing what it, it means, have you ever noticed that if someone is used to communicating in one language, but then it may be a little bit of a struggle, but they're communicating an idea that we even have in common with them, that we know about scripture, it's refreshing to hear someone express it freshly through a different language. Does that make sense? It like, does. Let's say um, I remember hearing this. I was in New York City as a child, and there was this this group, and I believe they were um, from Korea, and they were singing in their native language, and we were like really affected emotionally. And then in the follow up, in very broken English, they were describing what they were singing about, and it was so refreshing because even the word choice though not perfectly accurate, was so fresh. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. A lot of things can get mundane or boring, or we just get used to hearing phrases, even in church or scriptural things. And sadly, after a while, they don't mean as much. And then you hear someone from another country express it, even in English. But the way they structure the words is so fresh. Mm -hmm. it, it gives, I don't know, it kind of re... Um, yeah juvenates the meaning yeah, to just me. like alina did a few minutes ago with romans 10 9 exactly it was refreshing to hear you do that if you could do, read the entire bible on cd yeah, we'll for wait. us <laughs> <laughs> genesis chapter one in the beginning <laughs> so let me uh let me uh demonstrate my proficiency with google translate okay you have your song Pro, uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. How do I pronounce this? Uh, I know what it means. Just yeah. try it, Glenn. Uh, Embarrass yourself. Uh, uh, yeah, in front of hundreds <laughs> of people. The song, which means prophet. Let's do it that way. Uh, on the uh, uh, on your second CD that you had, uh, the, it was the EP. Um, oh, let me see if I can get this right too. Man, I feel like such a do it. You're uh, on illiterate, the spot. illiterate today. Luce, Lucerinarium. <laughs> am I correct? Um, that CD, the yeah, almost. almost, I'm almost there. Almost. She is so gracious. I know. <laughs> you know you blew it. I, and I she's totally like, almost, it. champ. Yeah, that there, loose and error. You're sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the third track, uh, the one that means profit. It's uh, pro rock. Is that it? Um, yes, pro rock. I did it. I did it. Oh, do you have a prize? I need a. I need a prize. I I need another cup of tea. Okay. Um, I was listening to that, 
And I, wrote, I was writing just what was coming to my mind as I was listening to it. And I just wrote beautiful noise. And it just reminded me, uh, because I couldn't understand the words to it, but that song moved me. And it wasn't until after I got done that I read what it meant. I'm like, oh, wow, that really flows in the vein of what we do, what Dan and I do in, in the prophetic. And it just went everywhere. And I was like, man, this was just really awesome. And it moved me without even understanding the words. And that was the first one that I Google translated to find, ooh, what is this? Because this is a really, really cool song. Huh. You know, it moved me. And what was really funny about that is I'm sitting here in the studio and Alina was online in Poland at the time so as I'm listening to the CDs I'm sending her messages of like oh yeah this is I like this you know this is really cool and I'm thinking okay she probably thinks I'm making this up because you know she knows I don't understand a word of Polish you know and I was like no really I do listen to music and in you know when you go to foreign countries you learn to appreciate right. different forms of music and that's one of the things that happened to me I spent time I spent a, a good piece of time in Israel for a while and of course where I was working they had the radio station on so I became accustomed to Mizrahi rock or Mizrahi um, Jewish music there are some songs on your on your IND CDs that are in English one of them is Wanderer which is absolutely beautiful um, can you tell us a little bit about that song and what, what the meaning of that song is and we're going to play that in a little bit for our listeners as well excellent of course <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, no, not for you. You guys are butchering my language, <laughs> and I'm not talking to you. The Wanderer uh, is an acoustic song, as you noticed, and it's totally different from our other songs, and it's a very calm one. It's, it's a kind of ballad, in fact. Uh, and I had some bad experience uh, in my life with people and some good experience, uh, almost as everyone, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but always in uh, these difficult times, I, I was always feeling uh, that God is with me, yes. And I always knew that, in fact, he's the only person I can fully trust. And um, the song uh, singing there, yes, that I can uh, trust the Lord and never resign from the path of uh, going with him, yes, because I want to fulfill my call and my call is singing for him to glorify him by the music. That's beautiful. Another thing, too, is while we were getting ready for this interview, you indicated to me that you've got a pretty big concert coming up soon in germany i believe it is and you're going to be sharing you're going to be sharing the sharing the stage with red the christian rock band from the united states tell us a little bit about that and are you nervous excited or both nervous and excited at the same time <laughs> i think both yes because Usually each band is nervous before any show because, for example, we don't have any manager and I need to take care also about uh, all the stuff connected with the concert, like, you know, booking the bus, uh, uh, arranging uh, any any additional stuff, uh, yes, and uh, to check the equipment, to check other other things. And I am usually very, uh, very nervous before I enter the stage and when I start to sing, it's like, ah, finally, I can focus on music, yes. <laughs> 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 so I'm a little bit nervous about all the stuff is go which is going around uh, the show, but of course uh, playing with such amazing uh, stars like Red and Disciple and many other bands, it's it's something incredible for us. It's our first uh, show abroad, so we are very excited. Let's that be is honest. exciting. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got to see Red here in our hometown. They played at a local church here. And this is really funny, Alina. I took my stepson to go see Red. Now, he had no idea that they were a Christian metal hard rock band. So I was like, yeah, we're going to go to this church and we're going to go see a rock concert. And pretty much when I said that to him, it's like he kind of rolled his eyes like, oh, this is going to be lame. OK, I mean, he just kind of gave me that. Oh, so we get in the car and I take my wife who's kind of like, oh yeah, we're going to a church to a rock concert. Okay. And it was really interesting to see the dynamic because when Red came out, all right, and they started bringing it down. Oh, okay, they, they bring it. Yeah, and my, my, my stepson's like, oh yeah, this is great. And my, my wife's kind of like, what in the world? Are we still at, are we still at church? And I'm just like, oh yeah, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, they were, they were unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're really, really good. One of the things that I really appreciate about talking with you and, and messaging back and forth is I really have sensed a really strong relationship with the Lord. What is the most significant thing that he has revealed to you about you serving him through music? What's the thing that just fires you up the most that he showed you? Hmm. 
you know what i i don't think that way to be honest you know okay. i i just want to be useful to the lord that's all in all aspects of my life not only in music and i'm trying just to be like jesus simply yes to act like jesus every day and i know he will reach people with or without my music let's be honest yes he's a mm -hmm. god and he makes the things right yes and uh, i just wanna uh, inform or, or know everyone uh, that uh, how how great and how wonderful is living with god to be in relationship with god that's all i want yes uh, so other could uh, could know jesus and here i am sent me yes that that's my motto <laughs> that's really significant when, when you i like that attitude yeah when you're open to minister but you realize that God's God. Yep. He can go right around you. He can use you. He can be without you. He's still God. I think that makes you prime to be able to really be used. Yeah. Because it's not like this is up to me. It's all on my shoulders. I better get in. I'm so important. You know, we become the center of things so easily. And, you know, in our background, how, how many times have we seen that type of stuff yeah, no take kidding, over? Yeah. I don't ever want to be like that. It's very refreshing. And I, I think that makes you... Uh, very um, useful yeah. to the Lord. You know? Yeah, what, what a privilege this is. I wanted to ask you on the podcast, because you talked about this when we were messaging back and forth, that you've actually received uh, feedback from some listeners that have been ministered to by your music, that you've been able to help through some difficult times, through your faithfulness to the Lord. And that excites me when that happens. Can you share with us the story that you that you emailed me about, about the, the gentleman that contacted you about the rough time? Mm -hmm. It happened a few times, at least, that uh, people come to me, especially after concert, and uh, want to share that some of the lyrics touch them deeply. And to be honest, a lot of uh, lyrics are based directly on the gospel, yes? So I am not surprised, yes, but they are. <laughs> One day, uh, I had also very, very heavy, it was a very difficult day for me. And in the end, uh, I was talking to God and I told him, does it really have any sense? I would like to, to know that people really need that music, that people really need that lyrics and that it has a sense. And the second day, uh, my friend uh, wrote to me uh, on Facebook that uh, he and his wife uh, lost their unborn baby. Yes, And uh, he told me that uh, thanks to one of our songs, which is called Przyjdź, and it's uh, totally based on the Bible. He managed to uh, struggle with that. It, it was confirmation for me. I, I shall not stop writing and singing and I shall still continue that. So I, I think I remember also a situation that one priest came to me and he told me that uh, he was praying with part of my lyrics and it was also like, wow, <laughs> I'm so small but God used my lyrics. Hmm. I'm, I'm very happy that you do this. <laughs> wow. wow. The Word of God is powerful and that's what people don't understand is the power of the Word of God. And one of the things that I'm excited about in doing this interview with you, again, as I said, the majority of our listeners are in the United States. And for some reason in the United States, we get this focus that, well, this Bible thing, this gospel thing, this love for Jesus is just something that happens in the United States. But it's not. It's something that's going on throughout the world. And God is using people like you throughout the world to spread, spread the gospel message whether it be spoken, written, or through music. And for our listeners, no, this is not just Dan and Glenn saying salvation is by grace through faith alone. Is that this is something that God's doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, hey Dan, let's have a let's have a cool program and you know, tell people, you know, uh we don't even know what we're doing half the time anyway, so <laughs> or where this is going. And that's that's kind of a fun ride with it because one of the things that you said, Alina, is that it's God. And us just being a servant. And that's, a, and Dan, you just reiterated that of just being a servant. Be like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Yeah. What, how do you want this? This is yours. And we've experienced that doing shows where he's taking total <laughs> control of the situation. Oh, yeah. It's, you ever notice it? I don't know if you can relate to this, but it's sometimes when you feel like you're not at your best at all, or you're maybe at your worst, you're trying or whatever. And then God will put you in circumstances where then you really have to minister something. Yeah. 
And it's almost like you don't really even want to. <laughs> and then you're right in that circumstance where somebody else really needed something that you could do. And you might be thinking, oh, man, I could do better here. I could do better there. I'm, I, who am I? All this stuff. Getting down, getting heady about stuff or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're right in the position and God's like, yep, yeah, you need to minister to that person yeah. over there. And this, I'm like, God, I don't know anything about that. And then he'll make you do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it's not about me, and it's, it's not, not about it's not, not about any of us. It brings death really to that the is self. what death is to self, definitely. Yeah. So, Alina, since this is your first international interview, we're going to do something a little bit different. Is we're going to turn the microphone <laughs> around and let you ask a question to Dan and oh, I. No. About us or about the United States? Do we have to answer in Polish? <laughs> That's con- I'm confused now. <laughs> I do not want to destroy their language <laughs> anymore or cause any international conflicts because I said something wrong. Now, I actually follow quite a bit of um, Poland in the news. Sometimes I really like Poland, and it's um, I have friends that live there, and I know a little bit, not too much, but I just I really like your country. A lot. So. so, do you have any questions of us? Hmm. <laughs> uh oh, I see that look on the face. <laughs> uh, and very seriously, I am wondering uh, how can you describe the condition of the church in the United States right now? Because you know, everyone knows uh, that uh, motto you have on every banknote is yes, "In God We Trust." Yes, but. What is your impression? Uh, does the society still care about God at all? I'm going to let Dan answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good. That's question. a really good question. Um, there are a lot of really precious believers here that uh, really love the Lord genuinely, and then there's probably the worst display of something called Christianity that you could possibly imagine um, that suffocates what I would and Glenn would probably consider to be kind of the real genuine, you know, people that love God, that want to express that love. Um, We sadly are geographically the location that comes up with a lot of new cults. Okay. A lot of really weird doctrinal cults have been birthed in the United States. It's part of what happens with freedom. You know, there's a lot of freedom here, which we are thankful for. And but there's a lot of weird toxic doctrines that have, that have come out of the United States. So I'm not going to dog a lot of it, but a lot of what I would call franchise Christianity. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you see a McDonald's, you know, in Tokyo or in Warsaw. I don't know if they have a McDonald's, but they probably do. We have a lot. <laughs> it's a franchise, and they kind of have that. We have a lot of that. It can look really fancy to the rest of the world. We might reach out to a lot of, um, there's a lot of third world countries in Central America, close to the United States or somewhat close. And we'll go there and they'll think, oh, wow, they're bringing this and that. But there's a lot of it that's not very um, scriptural would be one thing. And a lot of it has to do with um, things that maybe sound good, but it's not really the the gospel. It's Mm -hmm. not really, hey, God saved me from sin by dying for me. It's something different. It's it's more life enhancement. Um, Like, hey, God will bless us, you know, and and be like, hey, you know, you're getting blessed with a house, you know, and all these different things. You get blessings, but when a lot of the preaching, sadly, in the United States will be like, just about how to get stuff from God and that God is here to make your life, make you healthy and wealthy and wise and and all this. And especially if you send me money, you know, send me a love gift and God's going to hook you up really well. And so that's an interesting question. That's That's a really good question. A great question. It's something that is very central to what Glenn and I talk about a lot because we're concerned and I have friends in different countries that are missionaries. I actually have friends that are in Poland that are missionaries. And when I hear the amazing things of what is going on there, and I know some other people in Asia, um, and there's a lot of wonderful things going on around the world, sometimes it makes me covet the what's going on there, which I know... And I know there's wonderful things going on here, and I don't want to say um, they're just not quite as loud right. and not quite as front and center, you know. So a lot of wonderful things going on, and I don't want to be like that because I could be like that in the flesh. I could be like, ah, uh, you know, this and that. It's all contaminated. But there are a lot of flashy ministries that are horrible. I wish we could just flush them, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. But it's like they're there as a backdrop. So when the real thing, the real love of the Lord is expressed, 
people really do notice. And it's not about money. It's not about um, just being blessed or selling something. You know, it's it's genuine. So, yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, good question. That's We could do 10 podcasts we, we on could. that question. We could. For our listeners, if they want to listen to you at home or IND, again, I'm not going to chop it up, IND, where can they go to find you? Where can they find your music at? Poland. <laughs> in Poland. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go sit in the corner again. <laughs> of course, they, connect, they can connect Facebook. Uh, both bands they have their own address. Uh, that's the main source. If, if people uh, look for music, um, IND is on SoundCloud, on YouTube. And uh, some of at home is also on YouTube, and uh, we ha- as we have released already the album in the internet, uh, we have it available on iTunes, on Spotify, and on Amazon and some other portals. So if you write at home, uh, if you proclaim, you will for sure find it. And we're going to make it a little bit easier for our listeners. For the month of January, IND and at home are going to be our featured band of the month on lithoscry.com so we're going to put the links there for everybody to check it out and listen to your music to help support you Um, so lithoscry.com you'll be able to go there and find out more about at home and IND Alina thank you Yes. So much. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Uh, what we're going to do is take a quick listen to the song uh, Wanderer, and w- Dan and I will be right back. Thank you. Not going to wander away. <laughs> we're going to wander away <laughs> and listen to Wanderer from. My, my kids are good. That was a dad joke. <laughs> so sorry.
So, Dan, wasn't that cool talking to somebody from Poland today? Dude, all the way across the ocean, right? I know. And for our listeners. Awesome. She is. She's really sweet in the Lord, really sweet spirit. I I love that, how she just wants to serve the Lord. Yep. Get Real Podcast will be soon back. (laughs) I I like that. I love it. I love it. (laughs) One of the things that started stirring in me when I started reaching out and talking to Alina and listening to her music, at the same time, I went to... Jeremiah chapter 23. I just happened to open up the Bible where it talks about the evil pastors, the ones that have scattered the flock all over and how God is upset with them. But God, then in Jeremiah chapter 23, he talks about something. Uh, it's Jeremiah 23 at verse 3. Um, there's a scattering, but then God says, and I will gather the remnant of my flock, not just out of South Carolina, not just out of the United States, but out of all countries. Wow. And, and to think about where that's coming from, Old Testament, Hebrew writing, very, you know, to have that national, global focus. Yes. That's yeah. Amazing. And that, that was a very Hebrew centric, if that's even a word. We uh, just coined it. This we is just coined it and here on the Get Real program, uh, <laughs> Hebrew centric. And... It started stirring in me that in this time of a new reformation, which is important, what he talks about in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 3, is that after he brings them together out from all these different countries, they're going to be fruitful and and they will increase. And to me, that is the preaching of the gospel. That's the spreading of the gospel, and really what it boils down to is a new Reformation talk that is more souls being saved and snatched out of hell. Yeah. And I started thinking about it a little bit more, and these are just musings by Unpastor Glenn, is that music, and people are like, oh, you know, you're talking about music, you tell, we, we, we talk about Michael Jackson today, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, Music kind of serves as that tool that God can use to speak to people to draw them out and draw them back together. Now, God can stir in your heart to draw you to the truth of the gospel and to the flock, to the remnant, the calling back together again of the remnant. He can do it through writing. He can do it through books. Uh, There can be different things. But the thing that I've been hearing in my walk with the Lord is just that that sound of the Lord's voice calling that remnant together through metal, like the project that Alina is doing with IMD, IND and at home. And I did some looking today at music again, just some scientific research. And there was a study done by the University of Exeter at Tokyo. And a professor there said that the um, it was at the University of the Arts and the professor said that songs from around the world tend to share features that promote bonding and coordination among social groups. This is scientifically proven, hmm. which is kind of interesting. So God uses... Okay, let's just boil it down to the science. Music can be like a glue that brings people and bonds people together. So... To put it really simply, what I see God doing is using, and not just metal, there's other forms of music that God's using because it's all his anyway, to call out the remnant to bring them together as an army so that souls can be saved. And what's really exciting to me is what I've seen on our Lithos Cry social media is different people that we've interviewed starting to get together and converse with each other and support each other on social media. So there's this this domino effect that's happening that I really don't have any control over. It's God doing it. And that that really excites me that one of our, you know, so maybe somebody that we've interviewed reaches out to somebody else that we've interviewed and there's this common interest in the gospel and the salvation of souls. <laughs>